it's time for me to do another five book wrap up of books that I've recently read. So let's get into them. The first book that I have to talk about is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. Howl's Moving Castle is one of my all time favorite films ever, 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 bar none. If you follow me on any form of social media, you will probably see a Studio Ghibli Howl's Moving Castle theme going along. This is my lock screen. This is my background. My ringtone is the Howl's Moving Castle theme. It is everywhere in my life. I love that movie. So I had never read the book and it was very scary. I found it so daunting to read the book because I was just so afraid that it would let me down or make me feel differently about a film that I liked so much, but it didn't. This book was very good. So this is a fantasy novel about a girl named Sophie. She works at a hat shop and she is cursed by a witch and she suddenly becomes incredibly old and she needs to break this curse. She ends up living with Howell in his moving castle and his assistant Michael, the fire demon that powers the castle, Calcifer, and it's just a whimsical tale of these magical people. I really wish that I could have read this book and just like separated it from the movie, but it was very hard to do that. I already want to read this again because I think that I will be able to take the book more on its own than I did the first time around. And I feel like I didn't absorb all the details of this book and I, I just really already need to reread this. This book is just wonderful. It's so charmingly written. It's very whimsical and warm and it's like sitting by a fireside and just comforting and lovely and, and so magical in such a good way. I love the characters in this book. Sophie was an amazing protagonist. She kind of throws herself into the role of an old woman. She's like, well, I'm in this body. I might as well play it up. And she uses it to her advantage. And I thought that was so unexpected and wonderful. This book is so funny. I very rarely laugh out loud at books, but I literally was cackling at points in this book. So witty and so good. It was just so cool to see this story and the characters and this magical place that has been very dear to my heart for so long because of the film. This is where it all started. Like it all came from Diana Wynne Jones's mind and she created these characters and on the page they're, I wouldn't say more vibrant I guess, but vibrant in a very different way that is just enriches everything for me and uh, it made me so happy. I couldn't not give this five out of five stars. I love Howl's Movie Castle and now I'm so glad that I love the movie and I love the book and yes, so happy about this. Next I read When I Was the Greatest by Jason Reynolds. This is young adult I guess, although I kind of felt like it read more like middle grade fiction, um, but I do think the characters are like 15. It's kind of a slice of life book. It has not much of a plot. It follows these three boys who live in Brooklyn. It's told from the perspective of one boy and he lives in one apartment building uh, with his mother and his little sister and then he is best friends with these two brothers that live in the building right next to them. Of the two brothers they have kind of a less stable home life and one of them has Tourette syndrome and it makes life a lot harder to navigate for both of the brothers. It for different reasons because of that. Going into this, I read a lot of articles that compared Jason Reynolds to kind of the new Walter Dean Myers. I thought that was kind of a lofty statement when I started reading this book, but after finishing it, I completely understand. I think this has a very similar vibe to Walter Dean Myers' books. They're both black authors writing about black characters, and it's just kind of about that experience. So I really, really appreciated this book. I'm glad that it's out there. I'm glad that I read it. Um, I think more people should read it. I wouldn't say it's the most groundbreaking thing I've ever read. Like I said, not a lot happens. Nothing about it completely stood out to me or completely blew me away, but I enjoyed reading it. And I think the highlights for me were the representation in this book, as well as the family dynamics. The mother in this book is just amazing. I loved seeing that. The main character's father has kind of a more fraught relationship with his family, but it's not completely absent. And I really liked that it was developed and it was portrayed as a complex, nuanced relationship. And the younger sister in this book is also amazing and I loved the sibling bonds. I liked how there were two different sibling relationships in this book and they were very different, but they were both really powerful in their own separate ways. Yeah, I gave it three stars. I liked it. That's about it. 
it was pretty short and sweet. The next book I have to talk about is a graphic novel. It's called A Game for Swallows by Zaina Abirashed, and this is a graphic memoir that all takes place in one night. So Zaina Abirashed grew up in Beirut during the civil war in Lebanon. So the apartment that her family lived in had the safest room out of the entire building. So when there was a lot of violence going on in the city, all of her apartment neighbors would come and congregate at their house. And so this takes place over one night where there is a lot of violence and all of the neighbors start showing up and you kind of see how the night plays out. You see all their relationships with each other and you kind of get like a backstory for each character and it just paints a really pretty portrait of a community of people as well as what it was like during the civil war in Beirut and growing up in Lebanon at that time. I really enjoyed this. The art style is very stark and black and white and I really really liked all the clean lines. I liked the geometric quality of it. I liked the artistic patterns going on. I loved reading about these people. I liked all of their backstories. The only thing I really wish about this was that I had gotten more because like I said it just takes place over one day so it just feels very short and simple. I kind of sped through it. I think there could have been more. I think that I gave this 3.5 out of 5 stars when I finished it although honestly it's maybe more like a 3.75 like 4. I just think that it was very well executed. I really enjoyed every second that I spent with this. Immediately after finishing this I read the next book of this wrap-up which is I Remember Beirut by the same author and this is another graphic memoir that kind of deals with the same topics but this time it is not really about one specific moment. It's called I Remember Beirut and it's kind of follows the structure of she says I remember this, I remember this, I remember this and she just illustrates different details of her childhood. I definitely liked this. It had a lot of the same qualities that I liked about A Game for Swallows but ultimately it was a lot shorter. It didn't have as much of an emotional punch for me. This was a little bit more scattered and it didn't really feel like a complete collection. So I gave this one three stars. And then the last book that I have to talk about is Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. So this is a take on The Wizard of Oz in a sense. It's about this girl named Amy and she lives in Kansas. She lives with her mom who is an alcoholic. They live in a trailer home she is very ostracized at school because everyone bullies her for being poor. She has a really bad relationship with her mom. She's just like not happy for a lot of different reasons. A tornado happens and her trailer is lifted off the ground and she lands in Oz. So it's not like an Oz retelling exactly because it also all happened and it's real and she goes to Oz and she discovers that Dorothy went back to Oz and now is basically an evil dictator and everything about Oz is a horrible dystopia so Dorothy must die. That's kind of what this book is about. I did find it a little bit weird that she just kind of goes to Oz and she's like oh yeah I remember this from the movie. I get how this book is trying to turn Oz into a twisted dark story which is you know to contrast the light happy magicalness of the original Oz but I felt like Danielle Page kind of was like what can I do to make everything the most evil and the most awful ever and it it just felt like there was no depth to the villains. The Tin Man, the Cowardly Lion, the Scarecrow, they're all back in this story. Glinda is in it as well and all of them are just unspeakably evil and it's like really? <sighs> It was hard for me to believe. Also the magic system didn't quite make sense. Um, it was just kind of not explained. So I'm waiting to see if things get a little bit more depth as the series goes on because as entertaining as this book was, I don't think it was as fully fleshed out as it could have been. And it was very long so there was a lot more that could have gone into it and if the development of the backstories and the magic systems wasn't going to be in this book I think it could have been shaved down a lot. But I did have fun reading this. It's definitely a easy young adult read. There's a lot of action. There's a lot of twists and turns. The plot goes in directions I never expected it to. There were a lot of reveals that I 
totally wasn't even expecting. So I had fun with this. I gave it three, maybe three and a half stars. This is the start of a huge long series. There's lots of novellas and stuff, so I have already started the second book. I do want to know what happens, um, and I'm having fun with it. I'm not sure if I'm going to fully commit to reading every single book in this series, and it's probably not going to be one of my ultimate faves, but if you like The Wizard of Oz or you think that it sounds fun to read like a dark twisted version of The Wizard of Oz, maybe check this one out. That was Dorothy Must Die. That was book number five, so I'm going to leave it at that and I'll be back with more books soon. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.